Have you ever wanted to create a gradient border and also animate it? I mean something like this effect. Or more specifically, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this one. We will learn four techniques to create gradient borders. I'll break down the pros and cons of each so you can choose the perfect one for yourself. Let's get started. Okay, first, let's take a look at our markup. We have an article element with a class of card. Inside that, there is a media object box, which is this area that we want to apply the gradient border to. And this is the CSS I wrote for the media object. You can find the rest of the styles in the link I'll add to the description. Let's jump to the first method. In CSS, gradients are an image type, and there is a CSS property that allows you to apply an image to your border. That property is border image. To implement our effect using border image, first we need to apply a simple border to our element. But instead of a solid color, we use the border image property to apply a gradient. And then we give it a number to specify how our image, in this case the gradient, should be sliced and rendered in the border area. Here a value of 1 works just fine. I would love to show you how border image slice works in another video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to. But as you can see, linear gradient doesn't work here. To create our effect, we need to apply a conic gradient, which by the way works in all the modern browsers now. Conic gradients create color transitions rotated around the center point. And you can give them as many colors as you like. Here we just give them two colors. Also, I need more color stops to create the effect that I want. Okay, so far so good. But let's not get too excited and let's add a border radius to our element. Yep, as you can see, border radius doesn't work with border image. But if you don't need a border radius, this technique is the most minimal and the cleanest way to create a gradient border. Now before jumping to the second approach, which supports border radius, let me show you how to animate our gradient border. Do you know what's great about the gradient function? It lets you easily rotate the entire gradient at any angle you want. Let me show you what I mean in DevTools. With the conic gradient, just start with the from keyboard and then add the angle. Now you can just rotate the entire gradient using this handy tool. And do you see we get a bit of acceleration here? It happens because the shape is not a square, which might be an issue in some cases, but here it looks great. Now, how can we animate this angle? You might think I could just pop in a variable and animate it, but unfortunately that doesn't work. You can't animate CSS custom properties because they don't have a specific type, meaning you can give them any values like strings, numbers, etc. And this caused the browser not to know if it can animate their value or not. If we could register our custom property and define its type, then we could animate them. And that is why we have Houdini. Houdini and its add property allow us to give the browser more detail about the custom property. So now let's register our custom property. We give it a name of angle and set its type to angle and set its initial value to zero turn and decides whether it should inherit or not. And make sure you declare all these, otherwise it won't get registered. And now that our property has a defined type, we can animate it using CSS keyframes. Finally, it's possible to add the CSS variable in our gradient. And now if we define the animation, we get the result that we want. One last thing, if you want to have control over the animation, uh, for example, if someone each other on our element, you can update the play state in your animation. And now it runs only if I each other on our element. The add property support is not that bad, but it's gonna get awesome as soon as Firefox 121 is out, which then all the modern browsers will support it. But until then, you can have this effect and have the animation as a progressive enhancement, which is totally fine. What if we create another element with the gradient in its background and then put it behind our element in a way that it shows only a thin line? That thin line can act as our gradient border. This way, since we don't use a border image, we can have our border radius too. 
If what I said didn't make any sense, probably this will. Okay, I just copy pasted some of the code from the previous example and add a variable for our radius. Okay, first let's add our pseudo element as that extra element we talked about. But personally, I don't like to add more elements only for the sake of stylings. Yeah, for content or accessibility, sure. But when it's just a styling, I become a bit stingy. So I count this as a downside to this approach. Now I'm gonna add our gradient as a background image. Next, we need to position this so it can go behind the media object element. Now we need to say it's positioned relative to our media object. And next, we need to set the size for our pseudo element. Okay, I want my pseudo element to act as the border of my main element. Therefore, its width and height should be the width and height of my main element plus the thickness of our border. So I need to stretch out my pseudo element one pixel from each side. Therefore, I'm giving a value of minus one pixel. And to be more flexible, I use my border width variable here. So if later I change the thickness of my border, this gets updated too. If you are not familiar with the inset property, I wrote about it on CSS tricks, so you can dig into it. Okay, getting back to our demo, now our pseudo element is covering everything. So we need to give it a Z index. If you have layers on top of each other in your application, then adding more Z index can cause some problems sometimes. So I count also this as a downside to this approach. If I give it a Z index of minus one, now the pseudo element goes behind everything, including my card element. To fix this, we need to create a new stacking context for our card element, which is the main wrapper here. There are many ways to create a new stacking context, but two of them make sense here. One way is to give a Z index to our card element, but for the Z index to work, we need its position to be something different than a static position. Another way is to make this layer isolate like this. And now our pseudo element is in the right place. If you have difficulties understanding Z-index or stacking context, let me know in the comments. I would love to create another video on that topic. Now we need to hide this area, right? For that, we can give a background color to our media object. But now every time I change the background of my card, I have to change this color too. Of course, we could just use a variable here, but if I wanted to have my media object to be transparent, I had no luck with this approach. So this is another downside to this technique, no transparency. And finally, we set the border radius of our pseudo element to inherit, and here it is. We get the result that we wanted. Oh, it seems that there is a typo here, and there you go. But unfortunately, I'm not done yet. Let's make our border thicker to see what happens. See, it doesn't respect our layout and just go over everything. Why? Because the pseudo element has an absolute position. The solution to this is to give a same size transparent border to our main element. This way, that border is going to get involved in the flow of our layout properly. But wait, where did that border go? Yes, it's behind the border area of the main element that we just added, but we set that border to transparent, right? So what happened? You need to know that by default, the background gets rendered in the border area too. To prevent this, we can clip the background only to the padding and content box. Okay, and now our border is ready, so I'm just going to make it one pixel. And there you go. Just know that if you need transparency or you don't want to get involved with Z-index, you may want to steer clear of this approach. Now that we played some with the background properties, let me introduce you to the third method. Do you think it's possible to create such an effect using a two-layered background? If it works, we get rid of the extra element and the Z-index drama. The idea is to give our element two backgrounds and make one of them bigger so it can act as a border. 
Okay, let's start with this basic code that we are already familiar with. Now we add two backgrounds stacked on top of each other. The one underneath is our conic gradient and the one on the top needs to have the same color as our card so it can fake a transparent background. Here we had to use a linear gradient to create this solid color because we are using the background image property. So why don't we see anything here? It's because the first background covers the second one. Here, let me change its color so we make sure we are not telling any lies here. If I make it a semi-transparent color, you can see the other background too. But we don't want the first background image to be rendered in the border area, right? For that, we can use the background clip property to clip the background to the padding box, which makes this happen. Now, let me make our border thicker to see what's up with our other background. It seems he's sick or something. We know that by default, the background is painted across the border box too, but its origin is in the padding box, which starts from here. And what you're seeing right now is the background getting repeated across the whole space. And we can fix this by updating the origin of our second background. Now its origin is padding box and the other background can have the initial value. And now let's fix our border. And there you go, we have our effect without using any extra element. But as you can see, there is the problem of having no transparency here, which can be fine in many use cases. So far, only one technique provided transparency, which was the border image method, but it lacked border radius, right? So what if you want both? This is where the last technique comes in, CSS masking. If you have trouble understanding masking in CSS, I wrote a few articles on CSS tricks, which I'll leave the link to the description so you can check them out. Now let me show you how this technique works. Okay, let's say we have a background like this. Mask allows us to hide some part of an element, right? Now imagine we create a mask layer that has this shape. With this, we can perfectly hide the content box of our background image and show only the border box. And the beauty of masking is that we don't have to hide this part behind something, like in other techniques, but we can make it visually disappear, which is exactly what we want transparency, right? The basic of this method is very similar to our second one, which was using an extra element. So we already know how to get here. To apply a mask to hide the content box, but make the border box visible, first we need to have a border box, right? So I'm gonna add a border to our pseudo element here, and we make it inherit the size and everything of its parent. Now you can notice the problem with the background in the border area, but we already know how to fix this using background origin property. Okay, let's create the mask layer. There are a few ways to do this, but here we will use two simple rectangulars using linear gradient functions. Now we make one of these mask layers to cover only the content box. The other one can stay the same which is covering also the border box. Now we need to create the final shape of our mask layer using mask composite property. But before that, let me show you how composition works. As you can see in this video, mask composite property specifies how the mask layers with different shapes are combined into a single one. Here we need an exclude value and boom, our effect is ready. And let me make our border thin, like before. And here you go. And finally, we have the transparent background along with the border radius. Also note that mask has a pretty good support, but in some cases you need WebKit prefix for it. Now that we know how all these techniques work, let's compare them together. The border image technique doesn't give us radius, but you can have a transparent background and you don't need an extra element, so no z-index is involved. Using an extra element, we have the radius, but no transparency and also z-index might be an issue. 
multiple backgrounds method gives us a radius but no transparency lock here however we don't give the z-index a chance to mess with us and last but not least with CSS masking we get the radius and transparency but there is the z-index drawback and now let me show you how to choose the best option for yourself first ask yourself if you need a border radius if not just go straight for the border image technique but if you need a radius see if you need transparency if you don't need it multiple backgrounds technique is your friend however if you want to have a transparent background you need to wear a mask so don't fight it do you see how much we have to struggle for a simple gradient border I'll show you how we can make it easy for the future Lee started this conversation in the CSS working group about adding a new CSS value for this you can join the discussion and express your interest let's make this feature a reality on the web platform soon okay that's it if you enjoyed the video hit that subscribe button let me know your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching